We're here at the Midwest LSA Expo 2020. It's the final day and the sun's starting to come out again. We've had two nice sunny days here and looks like we're going to get another. I'm Dan Johnson talking with Dennis Shoemaker, who's got a gyroplane that I've been hearing things about and they're all good. So I said, I got to come by here and have a look at this. Appreciate it. Uh, Dennis, uh, tell me a little bit about well, how it is you happen to be in this game because you're a relatively new player to some people's perception at least right. and your aircraft looks a little different and what i see are three single seaters so that's a little different too yep bring me up to speed from what i'm looking at today okay. Dennis. well i've been into mechanical stuff all my life i have a shop that does uh, mechanical automation custom one-off machines and stuff a lot of robotics and stuff so i have the uh, cad software the cnc machines and everything i've been dreaming about getting into flying since i was you know, very young, had the pictures of the ultralights, the <laughs> scorpion helicopters, everything in my bedroom, never got around to it. Finally, when I decided to, I, I kind of looked around at everything that was available and then looked around at, you know, started researching gyros and stuff like that. Looked at the parts on a gyro and it, it just fit. It's a niche for me. I have everything ready. You saw your it. machine shop sitting it there. Was. It's like that. <laughs> the gyro is me. And then I start researching more about the gyros, the whole performance, safety issues and stuff like that. And it was hands down. I had to right. get into it. So I'm getting into it really slowly, though. Um, right now, my other automation business is taking care of everything. But uh, if I could make this, you know, 25, 50 percent of my business someday, yeah, that'd be great. Okay. Need to have bit. a fully uh, casting front nose wheel. Okay. Because if you come down crabbed a little bit and mm-hmm. touch the runway, you know, with your wheel not quite straight, you don't want to be darted off to the side of the runway. So on the top there, I have a little spring compliance device that will allow it to spring load at seven degrees each way. So if you do touch on a little crooked, it's going to straighten itself out. Uh, so with that, I still have the coupling then, so it gives you the best control, easy steering on the ground, your ground handling. So with these kits and stuff, I have the rudder set up. They can be mounted in two positions, either ahead of the instrument pod there or behind, depending on the height of the pilot. Oh, uh, okay. Make it comfortable. It is a pump stick assembly here rather than the walking beam length. Fewer moving parts, fewer chances for uh, slop in the system, nice and rigid. I see. Okay, yeah. yeah this I noticed when you did that, Get out of the camera's view. Yep, it just kind of it just kind of floats a little bit. Correct. It pivots on one point back there. Uh huh. Okay. So it's yeah. a little different motion. You know, more of an up and down than a forward back motion with a stick. But in flight, you're, the motion you're doing on the stick it's is so, so small, small you, you don't really even think about no. that. Huh? So what I have here is uh, my master cylinder, which we make in house too. <laughs> so on the front, we got your wheel brakes. Okay. Together, and it has a, a lock with a push uh, okay. pull release. On the back is your uh, rotor oh, brake. It's your rotor brake. Yeah. I yeah. see. Okay. I sh- I sh- so on this one, what we have on the side here, this is how I engage my pre-rotator. Ah. So basically it looks like a collective. Yeah, it looks like a collective, but yeah. you don't have collective on a gyro. No, so, okay. No. So, and on this one I have a twist throttle, but a, I also ah. offer a throttle quadrant, which is more people are used to that. So yeah, that's, that's the be, more common thing. Yep, yep. So basically with the twist throttle though, I can finesse the engine RPM as I finesse oh, the belt pressure. I see why you did it that way. Bring then. them up nice and quick. Okay. You know? And then once I'm done, push down, it locks out, so I can't accident if I tense up in flight, uh-huh. I'm not going to accidentally engage it and kind of mess something up there. Yep. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at the airplane now, Dennis, and I'm, I'm, you know, really, really, really impressed all the way back to here, and then I kind of go, but wait, your tail doesn't look like these modern gyroplane tails, and they all say that that's been a big part of why safety has improved, and I believe it is. Yep. But they're on usually a kind of a long sweeping keel, comes way back, usually two or three fins back here, and they're usually kind of low, but they look quite a bit different than this. They do. What's the difference here? Well, by getting your tail way back there is you get more leverage, and it's more effective to pull the machine around. But what do they have up front, though, too? Oh. They have this huge oh, uh, yeah. enclosure. you got to offset a bunch up here. Six, eight feet up there that you're trying to counteract. If you get into a side slip, that side pressure, that's what you're using that tail way back there for. Oh. With this shorter coupled machine like that, I don't have that side pressure up here. So it's, it's not necessary. Okay. Uh, plenty of surface area. The other thing that a lot of uh, gyros have is a full flying tail where it's all pivoting. This here, I got a stationary edge, oh, yeah. you got horizontal, your... and a moving rudder. Uh, basically oh, yeah. Morphing air yeah, that definitely is different than most. My horizontals are stationary bolt, but it can adjust those ground adjustable. Ah, okay, so okay. So this does not articulate right now, right. but you can adjust yeah. it. Yep. And why would you want to adjust it? Well, I have about a negative two degree in there, just in case you get a light load and stuff. You don't want that nose a tendency to pitch down. It's got to hold that nose up a little more. Ah, okay. Yep. The other thing with those uh, the other gyros with the short tail and the long stance is, well, the short tail. A tall tail is a lot might is going to be a lot better for canceling the load coming off the propeller. You have a slipstream spi- effect. Slipstream. Oh, slipstream. I'm getting the message now. Now, now on a on a, any gyro with a short tail. 
you're catching half that slipstream. It's hitting on one side of the tail down low. Sure. Causing the machine to want to yaw. Yeah. Now you got to you got to control to with to correct a, with that. With a tall tail, you're catching it down here and on top. Maybe Cancels a it out. Bit of, uh, torque on that, but basically t- t- has a tendency to cancel that that force. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. I really hadn't thought about that, but I, I see the logic of it. Yeah. And of course, with the prop right in front of the tail plane here, I mean. Uh, I mean <laughs> Airflow is not one of your issues. No, it isn't. <laughs> but yet they're out here far enough with the engine off, out condition. I still have. Ah, okay. The bulk of this horizontal surface is outside of yeah. all the components. Right. So you get a lot of you get a lot of action out of that. Um, basically, the tanks and the seat we don't produce. Everything else, frame, rotor head, blades, brake calipers, master cylinder. All, all You're doing machine. your own blades? Yes, we are. All right. Tell me a little bit more okay. about that then. That's okay. that's pretty uncommon. Yes, it's an 8H12 airfoil. Uh, it's been proven. It's used for years and years and years. It, it works. Like I said before, a gyro is not an efficient machine. You're plowing air, uh, it's dragging and stuff, but that what makes it fun and, and you know safe because you're in auto rotation and stuff like that. You're always in auto rotation yeah. in so a gyro, even right? Even though it's draggy and stuff, I can get this machine up to almost 85 miles an hour. Oh, really? I okay. typically cruise at 55, 60. Mm-hmm. So that little lack of performance you know, is not a big deal. Yeah. you got more than you need. So yes, we did get into that because there's a huge hole in the in the um, gyro rotor market. There's only one other manufacturer in the U.S. right now. Oh, really? And everybody, the European machines and stuff, a lot of them are making their own stuff. But you get these gyros dating back to the 1960s, 70s, Benson, Brock, Air Command, Dominator. Right. There's nothing available. So I I see that's going to be a growing part of my business, definitely. Ah, okay. Really so you'll do blades for other people too, absolutely. then. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And from what I've been seeing so far is uh, we've been testing them, getting quite a few hours on them now. I've been flying them for a couple of years. Um, I'm seeing faster acceleration into auto rotation and about an eight mile an hour faster cruise speed. The other thing on our blade is I really, really emphasize our quality control and our traceability on the blades. All the material certifications, all the uh, adhesive certifications, shelf life, process control. When we cure the heat set epoxy in each one, that heat profile, that's saved with every set of blades we make. Oh. And a customer, I mean, peace of mind, they know. All right, now we're looking, I, we like to call these things bare bones, and the reason is because, although you can see an awful lot of it on your other machine over there too, this one doesn't have the engine on it yet, it's not all complete yet, that means we get to see stuff we can't see on other ones. Correct. So the by the way, I, I love the sign, please oh. do touch. Yeah, I want them to get a feel of it, you know, there's nothing wrong, it's for display, it's... Uh-huh. Touch All right, great. Up. So tell me a little bit about this one now so and, and this is the some of the details. This is the that we were just looking at, only this one is not finished yet. This is my basic kit. So each customer is going well, to well, maybe do something a little different with the engine, different propeller, instrumentation, different finish. On the other one, I had uh, anodized, and then I machined the highlights on it, then clear coat, you know, whatever level you want to take it to. Yeah, that so was, this is that was beautifully kit. done. I noticed this the, is the chamfered kit. edges and yeah, stuff. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it, it gives it a nice pop. It so. sure does. So... So I just want them to feel comfortable knowing exactly what comes in the basic kit. This, what you see is what you get here. Okay. And beyond that, you know, I can do a custom quote. You know, this makes it look like not so hard. I mean, a lot of parts here, but it looks like a child's erector set. Yeah. Uh, a little more serious, obviously. Yeah. I could I could see that, all right, do this first, then do that. Kind of makes some sense here. Yeah. Continue well, on, please. Well, as far as the erector set going together, my documentation is also something I want to, you know, Please emphasize. talk about it. So the entire drawing, of course, I design everything on 3D CAD with all the stress analysis and all that. Um, but then I produce 2D PDF drawings with the exploded view, a call out, a balloon to each part. You can see where it goes. I also provide 3D PDF drawings. Now you can download uh, Adobe Reader, so these 3D PDF viewers, all free software. And I'll give you a flash drive. With each of those, you can w- open up each subassembly, rotate it around, click on a bolt. Oh, it's going to wow. say it's an AN4, 5A. Oh, wow, a. great. Yeah, there's no questions. Unlike video or pictures where you never quite see and the right angle. You can zoom in then and stuff like that? Yeah. Along with oh, fully wow. written documentation, too. Wow. So tell me a little bit about the build effort by the builder. Well, it's pretty straightforward with the documentation and stuff like that. I would say the mechanical part of it to get to this stage would be under under 50 hours oh. what i see here approximately 50 hours i'd say so yes. okay well that's that's yeah. not bad and it's mostly you know bolt b and the whole c kind of thing Correct. that's what it looks like to Correct. me and everything is cnc machines so those bolts are going to slide right in it's going to be <laughs> everything's aligned perfectly beautiful the computer tells it and computer doesn't lie yeah right and <laughs> so. knows how to repeat very well yes exactly <laughs> So, All right, you said something about a, a, a mass that you could yeah, take down. Yeah, for, How does that work? Okay, one of the, we talked about the tall tail earlier. Right. And one of the 
tough parts of that is if you do want a, a lot of machines do have a folding mass for storage and trailering and whatnot, but now if you have a tall tail, you have to disconnect the support up here. Yeah, right. And now your tail is unsupported. You get gusts of wind. Oh, and you know, I didn't think of that, but yes. So I made a little mechanism here that kind of keeps the tail supported while it folds. And I'm going to set my mic down here and just yeah, kind of fold it Yeah, so quick. we'll watch and I'll talk okay. while uh, Dennis does his thing here. But okay, he's, he's disconnecting the drive shaft first there. That was just a little, here's the piece that came out here. Not too much to that, just a little pin holding it in. Okay, and then you released a, a spring loaded. Okay, trim spring. Oh, your trim spring. I see. Okay, okay. Three bolts. Three, three bolts there to remove. One, two, three up there. All right. Ah, look at that now. And the support to the tail is still. Yep. So the tail still supported. Completely intact. Still supported and ready to trailer. That we get down to about six foot one. So it'll fit into just yeah, a small yeah, trailer. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's yeah. That, yep. Almost any trailer. Yeah, that'll or fit in. Easily roll into any standard garage door. Uh, do you are you going to offer a build assist to people? I do. I do okay. actually, and we're uh, so the customer can come to the uh, to our assembly. And area. where are you located again? Southern Minnesota. Southern Man Minnesota. Mankato, Minnesota. Mankato, Minnesota. We're just a couple miles from the Mankato Airport. Uh, oh yeah, the customer can come to the shop, and we'll walk them through. And if they feel better, we can show them where every bolt, every part goes. Explain why it's built the way it is. You know, give them because I want the customer to have an intimate knowledge about the machine. You know, if sure. You just so, but I have to admit that yeah. kits offer an intimacy with your airplane that you'll never get any other way. That is correct. So that's cool. Yeah. So. All right, Dennis. Well, I've I've asked you a lot of questions here, and you've been gracious enough to answer them all for me. But you know, people are going to have more that I didn't think of, especially the gyro guys that really know their business. How do we get a hold of you on the web so they can ask more questions or get in line for an order? Gyrotechnic.com. G y r o t e c h n i c. dot com. All right. Very good. I've got uh, coverage of gyroplanes uh, on my website, and I've enjoyed them very much. I, I really like this concept of aircraft, and uh, it's great to see another one come in here. You can learn all about those and now this one on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Dennis Shoemaker and myself here at Midwest LSA Expo 2020. Thanks, Sam.